Okay, is it true or not that when the channels or whatever the output devices are start to create a physical response, that they create a physical sensation in the cell? Okay, so is this what controls the cell, or at least a function within the cell, yes or no? What is this called? And the answer is, in the dictionary, there is a word for this. And the word is perception. Awareness of the environment through physical sensation. And basically, so you just saw the labeling of what? A device that controls the cell. What is this device that controls the cell known as perception? So are you controlled by genes? No, you're controlled by perception. Perception is how you read the environment and adjust your behavior. It makes sense because if your behavior is linked to the environment, then you're in, coordinated with the environment. If your behavior is not connected to, the, to what's going on in the environment, you're out of sync. And that actually is neurological problems in many cases when your behavior doesn't fit the environment. So the point about it is this, cells started to come together into community. And why this was relevant is, each cell is reading what it should do by reading the environment. But when cells start to come together in a community to make a multicellular organism like you or myself, then something has to happen. What's different about the individual versus the community and it's this, if I'm just a free living cell, I can walk around and do anything I want and it doesn't make any difference. But if I join a community, then the word community has meaning. It means communication. It means holding it together. That my, as an individual cell in the community, I can't do what I want to do. I have to do what the community agrees. That's part of the deal. If I give up my independence, I give it up to join the community, but the reason for joining the community is my, I've got greater chance of survival with more members all working together. That's what community is all about. That's why, community, why people came together to form communities instead of living alone, because community brings greater life. But when I look at that, then here's the important understanding. If a cell doesn't listen to the community's voice, then the cell is not part of the community. Cancer cells have withdrawn from the community. They're still in there, but they're not listening to the voice of the community. They're doing their own thing. Why would some cells get out of the community? And the answer is, why, do people, why are people homeless? Why are people out of work or why are people separating? If the community is not supporting them, at some point the cells recognize, my God, what do I want to be in this for? So there's a point that cancer starts to recognize as a result of breakdown of community. Well, let's look at cells moving in community. This is a uh, movement of a bunch of cells, and I'm going to show you the communication using a special dye. I can show you how the cells are communicating in this community. There's a dye that you can see the nervous connection of cells. Now, in this one, the dye lights up. It's a fluorescent dye. Now, you see the sparkling and flashing? That's the neurological process of each individual cell. But watch what happens. Waves of information start. Why? Because the cells are connected to each other. So the actions of some cells are spreading to other cells. So what you're actually looking at, it's sort of like an uh, electroencephalograph of cells. You're watching cells talking to each other because cells work together in a community. When the community falls apart, that's when disease starts to happen because that means that they're not, for some whatever reason, they're not being supported and, that's, and that will then uh, lead to the end of the community. So the point about it is this. Each cell has a brain. That's a fact. Each cell can read the environment and adjust its function for whatever it sees. But when cells get in a community, they defer their own belief system or their own system of what they're seeing to the central command. So as you can see here, I have a cell here on the right-hand side, uh, marked in purple over here, that this cell is out here in the environment. But what should its function be? Well, the answer is it's going to be coordinated by the brain because the brain is going to tell all the cells what we should do to work together to you know, provide for the success of my living organism. So the brain gets in between the environment and the cell. The cell no longer reads its own environment. The cell depends on the central nervous system to tell us about the environment. So the bottom line is this. The cell on the right is intelligent. It will always be able to adjust itself to the environment. That's when I was taking cells out of sick people and putting them in culture. They started to get better because when left alone, they could say, man, I could live comfortably alone without being in that system anymore. <laughs> and then, so the fact is, so what regulates a cell now? When it's in a community, the cell reads the environment, which is the left side, uh, but it doesn't read it directly. It now reads the environment through the brain, and the brain interprets the environment and then tells the cell what adjustment it should do to live in the environment that is seen. And the issue is, in general cases, this wouldn't be any big deal. But the issue deals with what about our perceptions? 
because it, perception is controlling the cell, not the genes. Well, let's ask some simple questions about perceptions. So you can take a test here because it's a perception test. And the perception test works like this. Very simple question. Is A, the surface area of A, greater than, equal to, or less than the surface area of B? What's your answer? Less, cool. But that's so easy, everybody can figure this guy out because they're nice little square boxes. But what if they're not so square? What if they're irregular shapes? So let's take a look at it this way. Okay, th you take this test. I'm gonna ask four questions, and then I'm gonna go over the answers. And the questions are basically the same in each one. Is the one country greater than, equal to, or less than the other? E equal to means approximate, okay? So the point is this. From your perception, and they get easier because I don't want you know, everybody to get all the answers wrong because you'll go home disgruntled. So I make them easier as we go along. The first one, is South America greater than, equal to, or less than Europe in surface area? Okay, hold that. Another tough one, not as tough, but is Scandinavia greater than, equal to, or less than India? Make a decision on that. And if you have trouble with that, let's make an easier one. Alaska and Mexico. And if you really got trouble and you got real vision error, is the north greater than or equal to or less than the south? You got those down? OK, so now let's look at the answers. The answer is South America is twice as large as Europe. You got that right? You got it right, good. OK, um, let's talk about Scandinavia and India. India is three times larger than Scandinavia. Did you get that one right? Oh, OK, maybe the easier ones. Let's go to the easier ones. Um, Mexico and Alaska, they're about the same size. OK, and uh, lastly, the north and the south. The south is twice as large as the north. OK, everybody got 100. Well, what's the point about this? And the point about it is what? This is your perception. What's it based on? The map. And so the reality is this. Let's look at the map. The map was made by Germans. So where do you think the dead center of the map is? <laughs> and what's the equator represent? What's the equator represent? It's the midpoint between the north and the south. But on the maps that we have studied ever since we were kids, where's the equator? It's two-thirds down the bottom of the map. So if I adjust the equator and bring it back into the proper order, then this is the map that you will see because this is the map that was put out by the United Nations. And the relevance of this map is what? It's not the world as you thought it was, right? And it basically, remember that third world, that little place someplace else? The third world is twice as large as the first world. And our perceptions have been off. Our perceptions which make us act in response to our perception, if we would use this map, if your life was dependent upon getting 100 on this exam, there would be a lot of dead people in this room at some point. <laughs> so the point is what? The point is perception is what gets between the environment and the cells. But what do we know about perception now? What do we just know? We just heard it. Perceptions may not be right. So rather than calling perception of the environment, beliefs. It's your belief about the environment that adjusts your physiology. And your beliefs become then most important because your beliefs are connected to your genes. And that the expression that you have is related to what you have going on in your head. Think about it. Maybe perhaps think about a time when you were really sick and you said, oh, God, I can't get up. And then somebody said, look, you've got to come to work right now. You've got to do something. You had to change your belief. What happened? You changed your belief, you got up, you got dressed, and you did the job just fine until you were able to go home and say, God, I think I can sit down and be sick now again. <laughs> and so the issue is this, that the point is the truth. Perception selects genes, but perceptions may not always be right. And therefore, perceptions, by definition, are called beliefs. And therefore, when I put that back into the equation, you're not controlled by genes, you're controlled by belief. And why that also comes to an important point is this. These women dance because their passion in life is to dance. They have no other belief except for the fact that they know they're going to dance. Age is not relevant to these women. Aging is a belief. And the problem with this belief about aging is that it will kill you. The belief of aging will kill you for this reason. As soon as you start to tell yourself in your perception that you can't do something anymore, then your biological system will adjust to prove you right.